of the Select Committee inquiry into the Government's management of the Powerhouse Museum and other museums and cultural projects in New South Wales. The inquiry is examining issues surrounding the Government's proposal for the Powerhouse Museum and support for the state's museums and cultural <coughs> sector more broadly. Before I commence, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people who are the traditional custodians of this land. I would also like to pay respect to the elders past and present of the Eora Nation and extend that respect to other Aboriginals present. Today we will turn our attention to issues faced by the state's museums and gallery sector more broadly, hearing evidence from this sector's peak bodies and associations, local government organisations and regional museums and galleries. Before we commence, I would like to make some brief comments about the procedures for today's hearing. Today's hearing is being broadcast live via the Parliament's website. A transcript of today's hearing will be placed on the committee's website when it becomes available. <coughs> Excuse me. In accordance with broadcasting guidelines, media representatives are reminded that they must take responsibility for what they publish about the committee's proceedings. It is important to remember that primary, uh, sorry, parliamentary privilege does not apply to what witnesses may say outside of their evidence at the hearing. And so I urge witnesses to be careful about any comments you may make to the media or others after you complete your evidence, as such comments would not be protected by parliamentary privilege if another person decided to take an action for defamation. The guidelines for the broadcast of proceedings are available from the Secretariat. All witnesses have a right to procedural fairness according to the procedural fairness resolution adopted by the House in 2018. There may be some questions that a witness could only answer if they had more time or with certain documents to hand. In these circumstances, witnesses are advised that they can take a question on notice and provide an answer within 21 days. I remind everyone here today that the committee hearings are not intended to provide a forum for people uh, to make adverse reflections uh, about others under the protection of parliamentary privilege. I therefore pre request that uh, witnesses focus on the issues raised by the inquiry terms of reference and avoid naming individuals unnecessarily. Witnesses are advised that any messages should be delivered to committee members through the committee staff. To aid the audibility of this hearing, may I remind both committee and members and witnesses to speak into the microphones. The room is fitted with an induction loops to com uh, induction loops compatible with hearing aid systems that have telecoil receivers. I now welcome our first witnesses, Ms. Foy. Ms. Foy, I remind you that you do not to be sworn, as you have already been sworn for this inquiry. And Ms. Pittman, may I ask that you state your full name, position, title, and agency? Swear neither an oath or an affirmation. The words of both the oath and the affirmation are on the cards on the table in front of you. Annette Pittman, <clears throat> Head of Create Infrastructure at Create New South Wales. I solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence now about to be given by me shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Would you like to make a short opening statement? Yes, please. Please proceed. I would like to thank the committee for the opportunity to be here today to provide a greater understanding of the New South Wales government's current cultural projects. Create New South Wales is the lead agency in New so arts agency in the New South Wales government. It undertakes a broad range of activities designated to provide to promote a thriving arts and culture offering for the people of New South Wales. Create New South Wales has an unprecedented and exciting capital infrastructure portfolio, Create Infrastructure, which I lead. We are responsible for ensuring the delivery of over $2 billion new, of new and renewed cultural facilities. Our diverse portfolio of projects includes the Walsh Bay Arts Precinct, the Powerhouse Museums, Sydney Modern, and the Australian Museum, among many others. Create Infrastructure administers the $100 million Regional Cultural Fund, which has funded 136 projects from all regions of the New South Wales, of which 42 are regional museums and galleries. We work closely with many partners, including end-user arts organizations, our clients, Infrastructure New South Wales as a delivery agent, local governments, and other public and private stakeholders. Arts and culture enable lifelong learning, bring communities together, support the visitor economy, activate our civic spaces. They competitively position our state to attract investment, talent, and visitors, build, a, build livable communities, and enhance individual well-being. Cultural infrastructure plays an important role, increasingly important role, in attracting visitors to New South Wales, with cultural visitors more likely to stay longer 
and spend more time than other visitors. Our cultural facilities contribute to the global recognition of New South Wales as a flagship state for the arts and culture. Create Infrastructure was established in 2017 to advise the government on cultural infrastructure strategy and development and to oversee the delivery of cultural infrastructure projects. Following significant research and consultation, CREATE issued the Cultural Infrastructure Plan in 2019. This plan is our guiding strategy underpinning the once-in-a-generation renewal of arts and culture infrastructure across New South Wales that are, we are currently overseeing. CREATE Infrastructure is made up of a small group of industry professionals who have the experience in all aspects of cultural project development, delivery, operation and maintenance nationally and internationally. We are proud of the work that we do delivering important infrastructure in communities across New South Wales. Because we understand this hearing will focus on museums and galleries outside of Sydney, I would like to offer a few examples of the projects that were funded through the Regional Cultural Fund. Many Regional Cultural Fund projects enhance the functionality of existing infrastructure, enabling a broader range of programming to occur improving sustainability through greater, gener through greater revenue gen generation and increasing opportunities for educational programs and youth engagement due to the availability of state-of-the-art technical equipment and improved facilities. The funds support uh, projects ranging from the construction of major new exhibition and performing arts spaces through, the, through to the refurbishment of libraries, theaters, and museums on small grassroots community projects. In Kyogo, the Regional Cultural Fund um, funded the Historical Society to fit out a new museum with a computer room, storage and exhibitions. The entirely volunteer-run museum can now accommodate school groups. This project is now complete. The Land of the Beardies Museum in Glen Innes was funded to install a fireproof store and sadly recent fires um, came devastatingly close to that <coughs> township. The new facility will provide protection for the, com for the community's valuable museum collection in future um, fire emergencies. Bundanon, near Naura, holds the bequest of the late Arthur Boyd. Government committed $8.5 million in regional cultural fund um, money to realize the Bundanon Trust's Riverside Master Plan. The project will make huge improvements to the site, including fireproofing, and enhance Bundanon as a significant economic driver of the region. Subsequent to the state government's commitment, the federal government granted an additional $22 million to realize the project. I'm pleased to report that 58 of the 136 projects funded through the Regional Cultural Fund are now complete and operational. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the valuable partnerships that we have with local governments and community organizations through, without whom these important projects would not happen. I once again thank the committee for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Um, Ms. Ms. Pittman, how long have you been with CREATE New South Wales? I joined CREATE New South Wales in March 2019, and I assumed the role of a head of CREATE um, infrastructure in August 2019. August 2019. Where were you before before March 2019? I've had um, my career has been built on uh, creating um, cultural and and sporting infrastructure predominantly. Um, I've spent uh, t nearly 10 years in uh, Victoria, leading uh, for state government in Victoria, leading a series of uh, government projects there, including um, the the Arts Centre redevelopment, um, the Hamer Hall redevelopment at Arts Centre and the Tennis Center redevelopment. Um, I, I left for, um, for a period of time and, uh, and went into consulting and now um, left the, uh, the, the private sector to come back to government. Okay, thank you. Um, in your opening statement, you mentioned that you're in charge of a portfolio of $2 billion involving Walsh Bay, Powerhouse, Sydney Modern, and the Australian Museum. Can you give me the breakdown of that $2 billion? Uh, I, I would have to take that on notice when I can give you, give you the full details, uh, yes. Ms. Um, Ms. Pittman, are you familiar with the program? And oh, actually, sorry, you mentioned it in your opening statement. You introduced it, the Regional Cultural Fund. Mm -hmm. You introduced that in your, your opening statement. So thank you for doing that because you've given me an opportunity to, um, to ask you some questions about, about that. Are you aware of how are those projects selected for approval? Mm -hmm. 
just need to refer to our notes. Well, she introduced it. No, no, no. I'm not. Uh, it's within the terms of reference. It's yes. It's and I just want to remind you that she actually introduced it. No, so. I don't need to. It's, it's all right. I'll just just see where this line of questioning <laughs> is going. <laughs> You'll know in a few minutes. No, no, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if Ms. Pittman can help me explore my line of questioning. I might move the microphone closer. <laughs> so you can growl. No, come on. No. So I might pick up some of that and then um, ask Ms. Pittman to take on some of the detail, if that's all right, Mr. Sigurd. Thanks, Ms. Because um, some of these things have predated us, so we just need to make sure that we're um, referring to our records. Yeah. So in 2018, um, the RCF's $100 million program supported around 136 projects. Yep. Um, given that this is an inquiry on galleries and museums, 40, I just wanted to yep. give an idea about that. $42 million was uh, allocated to 42 museum and galleries projects. Yep. Um, the total... So the process involved uh, a number of um, panels um, and there was so there was um, there there are pa there's a panel process involving both uh, public sector yep. em employees as well as independent people, both as chairs and or as members. Right. Um, we made sure that we had a probity uh, framework that sat around that, and that we drew on the probity principles from uh, both or oh, three three areas: the Department of Premier and Cabinet, yep. um, the Good Practice Guide to Grants Administration. Yep, I know that one. Yep. Um, for a matter of the record, that's a 2010 publication. Oh, okay. The New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption yep. Report on Managing Conflicts of Interest in the Public Sector, a 2012 publication. Yep. Uh, and at the time, Create was in the Department of Planning and Environment, so it complied with the Department of Planning and Environment's Code of Ethics and Conduct for Employees. Um, and the administration of the RCF grant mm. is consistent with the Australian National Audit Office uh, Best Pract Better Practice Guide for Grants Administration, a 2013 publication. So the applications to the RCF were assessed by an independent panel uh, and established for each funding round. It had representatives with regional expertise um, from all parts of the, from across the arts and cultural sector, infrastructure industry, and as I said before, people, uh, public servants from government. There were four uh, program criteria, um, case for change, capacity to deliver, value for money, and in, engagement and reach. Um, the, those applications were assessed by the panel against those criteria uh, based on the information that was provided and then that assessment, that uh, advice was provided to government for decision. Can, can I stop you there? You, you, mentioned, you mentioned a probity framework involving yes. DPC, yep. Good Practice Guide 2010 yep. and ICAC. So do you stand by all 136 projects where approved according to proper pro probity and ICAC procedures? My understanding is that all of the projects that were put forward were eligible for funding okay. against the criteria. Are you aware that there were seven projects that were submitted to the program after the deadline and they were accepted for consideration after the deadline, which contravenes common good practice that once you miss the deadline, are you aware that there were seven projects my, that... My understanding is the probity framework allowed for uh, a decision to be made uh, by, um, uh, by, I believe, uh, the, appropriate or the appropriate executive inside CREATE. There was, a, there was an al al allowance for a decision to be made to accept late... Um, who, who made the decision to... I'd have to refer Can you back. take that on notice I'm and provide... very, very happy to take Provide the notice. full name and title of the person who provided... Very happy to. Okay. Are you familiar with those seven projects that missed the deadline and were accepted? No, no Mr. Is Sequel, it, is it normal? Is it normal in these processes, in these grant processes, to have projects they, they submitted can, after they, the There deadline? can be quite legitimate reasons for projects to be to be submitted late, whether that's... Um, I don't know how late, you know, whether it was at 30 minutes an hour or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is not unusual. There can be things that are outside of people's control that require us to 
look at each on a case by case basis, whether record... there were technical issues, etc. Do you record that information as to how late they're submitted? For example, I agree with you. There's a difference between thirty minutes and three weeks. Yes, yeah. I, I, I'd expect that that would, would be there recorded, be a and the decision weeks? making. I, I'd expect yeah, there that, would that would be, be recorded. Yes, there really? would be a problem. So now, now, whether it has been, I'd have to check. Yeah, would you be able to? I, I don't expect you to have this information with you of today, Ms. Foy, but would yeah. you be able to take on notice how far after the deadline? those projects were submitted? I'd be happy to. And would you know, off the top of your head, either yourself or, or perhaps Ms Pittman, whether representatives <coughs> from the department contacted those organisations to solicit or encourage them to make applications or whether they came up with the idea on their own but for whatever reason they just happened to miss the deadline or well, were they proactively encouraged and told, why don't you make Plus, an application to To assist phone. Ms Jackson, could I, to make it easier for you when you take that on notice, could I nominate the seven projects that I would like that answer to relate to? Yep. Spiral Gallery in Biga. Could you spell that for me, please? S-P-I-R-A-L. Yep. Gallery in the electorate of Biga. Mm-hmm. Burke Arts Council in Burke in the electorate of Bar uh, Barwon. Um, Manning Entertainment Centre. Mid Council, Mile Lakes. Wired Lab in Kudamundra. Could I make a point of order here, please, Mr Chair? Um, I've been listening very closely um, to the Honourable Walt Secord, and he has been, he had been, within the terms of reference, which are very specific about... Um, galleries and museums and the the I presume the term of reference that he's under is uh, B uh, Roman numeral one which is co current government policy funding and support for museums and galleries across regional New South Wales uh, that's fine when we're talking about museums and galleries but Mr Secord's now straying into other projects that aren't directly Mr. related to Mr Chair? Sorry, could I just please finish my sentence? Oh, sorry, I thought you finished. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were done. It was, um, it was that soft voice of yours. I know, <laughs> soft and, and mellifluous. Order, order. Sorry. I wouldn't uh, go quite that far. <laughs> um, and I would respectfully suggest, Mr Chair, that while I understand what, where Mr Secord's going, there is a danger that it now broadens to such a degree that it's actually outside the terms of reference for this inquiry. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll entertain the question, but I'll also wait for the answer to see whether it does actually broaden to the point where now, it's Mr. outside the terms of reference. To make it really simple, in fact, the title of this inquiry is actually into the government's management of the Powerhouse Museum and other museums and cultural projects in New South Wales. In fact, even the title of this committee relates to the questions I'm asking. And I only have two more two more facilities that, that I'd like uh, her to... Could I, could I just... It's very that? clear it is within the terms of reference and, in fact, the title of this inquiry. It's... Could, I, could, I just, uh, could I just address that? I think uh, whatever one can say about the title of an inquiry, actually, if one's looking to what's within or without the terms of reference, one actually goes to the terms of reference, Indeed. not to a title. Um, and, look, I, I'm fairly relaxed about this. This is, this is obviously starting to take a broader exercise, but I, I actually support my friend <laughs> that really there is, a, there is a limit to how far we could stray. OK, and if you, I, keep, if you keep straying, you won't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you in on a secret. It's a pretty defined group. So can, now. We, uh, um, can we allow him to see whether he does actually stray far enough to, that he loses all his friends? Yeah. <laughs> um, Ms. M M Ms. Foy, Ms. Um, so the last, the last three are Marimbula, Marimbula Old School Museum in mm. Biga, Summer O'Brien Warrabungal Shire Council, and Artist Tree Studios. Now. The reason I ask about those seven projects is that seven of them missed the deadline. And four of them <clears throat> were approved. Are you familiar with a legal firm called Clayton Utes? Yes. 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 Uh, what is their role as a probity advisor involving this program? Uh, they were the appointed probity advisor to the program, and I understand that there was a nominated person from the company uh, that was working closely with each of the panels. Are you aware that they, um, they expressed concern that um, four of those projects in the electorates of Bega, Bowen, 
Mile Lakes, Cootamundra, and again Bega were, sorry, forget the last Bega. The, um, so Bega, Bawarna, out of Sabawin, um, Mile Lakes, and Cootamundra. Are you familiar that they wrote a letter expressing concern saying that um, the projects were receiving funding after the deadline and after um, guidelines set out by the Australian National Audit Office? I'm not aware of that particular advice, but I'm happy to take it on notice. So, so is it, is it, what does a, does a public official, do they have a responsibility if they approve a project or a panel approves a project that misses a deadline against against the express wishes or concerns of a pro is there a are there ramifications to a bureaucrat doing that look if if i could if i could may go back to your first comment um the ministers ministers and government approve projects um panels provide advice and, and bureaucrats provide provide advice to elected officials um who are there to make those decisions um my understanding is, uh, in, in reviewing um, some of the information, is that all of the projects, all 136 that were funded, um, were eligible for funding and demonstrated their capacity to meet the assessment criteria and deliver those projects um, that would provide both a social and economic benefit. So the role of the panels is obviously we have, um, we have guidelines that govern how bureaucrats work, we have probity frameworks that govern how projects uh, admit, are administered and we provide advice to government um, for those ministers to make particular decisions. Okay, so Ms Foy, can you then tell me, and take this on notice if you're unable to, of the 136 projects approved, mm -hmm. how many were recommended by the panel and then how many were recommended by Minister Harwin or um, Deputy Premier or the Transport Minister, the member for Bega, or the member for Mile Lakes, Stephen Bronhead, Parliamentary Secretary. And then the last one is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Deputy Premier, Steph Cook, member from Cootamundra. So of the 136 mm -hmm. that were, how many were approved by the independent panels comprising of the bureaucrats, the public servants, and how many were approved by um, political masters or ministers. <laughs> a point of order again, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, again, my point is to actually relevance to the terms of reference. Uh, this will be a relevant question uh, when talking about those projects that were museums and galleries that received funding under the uh, Regional Cultural Fund. But to throw this net so broadly is well outside the terms of reference. It, she she actually said that she had sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, Ms. Pittman actually said in her opening statement that she had responsibility for a two billion dollar infrastructure program and the regional cultural fund. This is entirely within and it relates to our terms of reference and she actually introduced the program herself in her opening statement. Indeed. What, what we, part of that are you quibbling with? The fact that she referred to the Regional Cultural Fund because she referred to the 40 odd galleries and museums that were funded under the Regional Cultural Fund. Just because she said three words doesn't mean we're able to actually look at every <laughs> single thing that comes under those three words. She also said the word government. That doesn't she mean that we it. can now look at eye care. Well, that's right. We Mr. Don't, Franklin, we don't get she made it a centrepiece of her opening statement. She did, that she and had she talked about the regional museums and galleries <laughs> that were funded under the Regional Cultural Fund. That's exactly what the Hansard said, and I asked for confirmation from the witness there. <laughs> of the 136 projects, all were, all were deemed as being eligible for funding. 42 of those related to museums and galleries. Um, of the $100 million, those 42 uh, museum and gallery projects uh, coincidentally <coughs> received $42 million, which makes it easy to remember. Um, so um, we're happy, you know, I'll, I'll be obviously in the hands of, of the committee, but um, to take on notice any of those projects that are relevant to the terms of reference. Oh, I, I, I've spelt them out. I'm, I'm, near, I'm yeah. nearing the ending of, of my questioning. But I do want to point out that she also, because I took copious notes during her opening statement, and she actually drilled down herself and then provided individual examples of those 42 museums, mm, including Get, Glen Innes and Kai Ogle. Yeah. So she... Indeed, she talked about those specific 42. Can we, order, order. Can we just okay. focus, okay. focus okay. on the questioning okay. and so ask a drill question. down as much as so, you need, need to? <laughs> so, Ms Pittman, thank you for introducing that and making it very, very, very... So I look forward to getting these answers back.
questions on notice. Now I'll turn to the Powerhouse Museum. Ms. Mm -hmm. Pinwood. <laughs> you have to be nimble in these kind of fields. Yeah. <laughs> That was an opportunity. Can I, can I ask okay. a question before you go oh, away I'm from sorry. grants? Yeah. Sorry, yes. Program funding grants for museums. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure whether I should direct this to you, Miss Foy, or uh, you, Miss Pittman. I'm happy. You, I'm happy you to happy? Indicate, okay, yeah. so am I. Um, museum is funded under the program grant funding category. Um, Hawkesbury Museum, 105,000. Uh, Orange Regional. 80,000. Sorry, Chair, may I ask, are you referring to the Regional Cultural Fund projects? Yeah, or the, okay, and I'm, well, what I'm pointing out is that the, the programs for the regional museums totaled 305,000 out of a total of 18 odd million, 1.68%. Mm -hmm. um, is there any reason why that percentage should be so low? I couldn't answer that question. Um, so, could you repeat what those muse they get the museums or galleries? Yeah, are? Re Hawkesbury Regional Hawkesbury, yep. Museum and Gallery, one hundred and five thousand. Orange Regional Museum, eighty thousand. Uh, good local member there. Uh, Museum of the Riverina, seventy-five thousand. Yep. Another good local member advocating for their <laughs> Aubrey Library Museum, not so good, forty-five thousand. <laughs> I, I Total 305,000 out of 18 odd million. I would need to check on what the um, the original bid was from those museums um, and what the what the um, inputs were to uh, require or to to have that result of funding. But I'm very happy to take that. Yeah, on, if you could on take that on notice for me, that would be good. Um, I, I notice um, turning to project grants category that only one regional partnership was granted some money, and that was the Albury City Council, mm -hmm. 74,000 out of a total project grant funding of about 5.9 million. Um, again, it's only 1.25% of the total. Mm -hmm. um, whether there's some explanation on what the criteria are that, that sort of refined it down to that. Certainly. And uh, the professional development support grants, um, uh, we're talking there about 1.3 million, but there was nothing given to museum creators or creators uh, or funding for museum creators as such. Curators? No. Cura and curators, yeah, there was no, there was nothing, nothing given for the professional development of those people. So mm -hmm. again, out of that 1.318 million, what was it turned to? And strategic funding grants, museums funded zero, um, obviously, percentage of the grant of 4.128 million was also zero. Could I get a, some more detail on that, please? Very, very happy to. Um, I mean, certainly, it's worth saying that um, we had uh, f for for our projects. There are obviously a lot of a lot of interest and in, in many submissions made. So um, I'll, I'll go back with. Uh, come back with some detail on each yeah, of those. Yeah, well, you. the reason I'm focusing in on that is because the total 18, 2018 19 arts and cultural grant funding was 56.2 million, mm -hmm. of which total funding for museums was only 305,000, and um, regional museums 305,000. So it's a 0.67% of the total of amount course. of arts and cultural funding went actually to the bush. Of course, I'm happy. I'm happy to take that on notice um, and incorporate any other information yeah. where um, right. maybe not through that grant fund, but other grant funds. There are um, funding provided to regional regional but, yeah, areas. Yeah, if you can elucidate, are, if there is other money going, of course, from another fund to to uh, supply for similar purposes, I'd be interested. But and I mean certainly, say for example, um, through libraries. And uh, I apologise, I don't have the figure on the top of my head. There's quite a significant amount going to libraries in regional New South Wales, and that's been um, announced certainly over the last 12 months. And my understanding is it's the biggest investment in regional libraries um, in yeah, a but Ms. Foy, we're not talking time. about libraries here, we're talking about regional museums oh, sorry, and galleries. Sorry, apologies, I'm, I'm yeah. happy to take that one. Point of order, point of order. <laughs> <laughs> I withdraw, so, Chair. And you that's, notice that's no, no of points of order called on you, Mr Chair, because yours was smack on in terms of... Oh, stop reference. that! Stop <laughs> Very fond of you, Mr Chair. <laughs> oh, look at that, look at that, he's trying to... Actually, you should come and join our party. <laughs>
It's a broad church. Questions? Um, it is. Ms. 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 Pittman, what is the current, um, now I understand the figure Ben here wrote is $840 million for the Powerhouse Museum. What is the current budget at this stage? The, the total cost to government for the, for the Powerhouse Museum and the Museum's Discovery Center is $840 million. When you, when you say total cost to government, so then that involves offsets, selling land, things like that, airspace, is that correct? No, the, um, the announcement made on the 4th of July this year mm -hmm. uh, m was um, removed the requirement to, to sell um, any property for, um, to fund the project. Okay. Sorry, you said 840 million. Yeah. Correct. What's the status of the, um, when will we see the final, 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 final business case? It'll be done by the end of the year. By the end of the year. Um, what is the cost of the business case? The budget, mm, <clears throat> excuse me, the budget for the business case is $5 million. $5 million. When, um, Ms. Foy, when did you hear about the decision, the July 4th announcement? Uh, I think we discussed this last time, um, so my answer remains the same. It was the... You're a pro. Well, <laughs> you can't ask... Afraid the, the truth yeah. always remains the same. So. Yeah. Uh, so, so what is the answer? Third of, third of July, the day before. Third of July, okay. Ms. Uh, Ms. Pittman, when did, you, uh, when did you find out the, the decision, because you're in charge of Create New South Wales Infrastructure? Third of July. Third of July. Can I ask, Ms. Pittman, in relation to the development of the new business case, has any parameter, have any parameters been provided to you by government in relation to additional funding that might become available to, to, to fund options out of the business case or are you expressly to be constrained by the current funding envelope? And, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Well, the current cost of government is $840 million, in, but the final business case has not yet been developed. And right. so I suppose I'm wondering, could there be options coming out of the business case that require additional funding, or have you expressly been directed to avoid that outcome? We haven't been directed to avoid the outcome of, of a potential cost. Um, the, the, as, as is normal with a business case, you look at multiple options um, for, for the future of a site. Um, the Ultimo site is a very, is, is a very important site to, um, to that part of the city. Um, we, we've been asked to, to look at a number of, um, of potential uh, uh, items on the site, um, but the, the um, announcement on the 4th of July uh, made it clear that the the powerhouse museum will remain on the on the site, and that is the centerpiece of the business case that we're developing. Is the sale of the Harwood building an option that's canvassed in the business case? We're we're not canvassing any options that look at selling selling properties. And so, sorry, just to follow up on my previous question, it is there could be or it is possible that there are options out of the business case that do require additional funding from government in order to meet that particular outcome? Oh, look, I think it would probably be a bit early to, to go through any of that detail. We're just still in the process of finalising, of completing the work. Um, and as part of that, obviously, talking with relevant stakeholders, including the City of Sydney, um, around that, because the Ultimo site, um, I think as we, we talked about previously, is um, a very important site. It's quite a complex site with different, you know, bits and pieces. I think I talked last time about the constraints of the Harwood building. Uh, we have a heritage part of the part of the site we have the the ran building it's proximate to um, central station to the goods line uh, and and ultimo and piermont so we want to make sure that it suits where it sits in the precinct um, the government has a and and it, it's obviously this has been talked about by the minister and i refer to his evidence last time um, the desire for uh, having an option that looks at a lyric uh, at a lyric theatre, um, creative industries being part of the precinct, um, there is a commitment that the the, the powerhouse remains uh, remains at the site. We are looking at um, an addition of a um, fashion and design museum capability on the site. The retention of those very large objects. So um, all of those 
pieces are moving together and we're going through the consultation um, with a number of stakeholders as part of, as part of that process. Uh, and I, I'm just, uh, I think it's too early to make any decisions one way or the other about investment. That would be a matter for us to advise government. When you say that it, you know, you understand that the government's intention is for the powerhouse to remain in this, at the site. Commitment, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's but what, what exactly does that mean to you? Because, do, you know, what is the baseline of the powerhouse remaining? Is it literally the sign that says powerhouse museum and the three large objects? Or oh, no, 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 what, it's, it's... what is your understanding of that? the extent of that commitment. So there is a, the retention of um, a, the, the Powerhouse Museum. Uh, Lisa Havilar, the Chief Executive, is working through what what that looks like inside it. Um, obviously the very large objects um, and a fashion and design capability, but there would be you know, a range of other exhibitions as part of that. Um, so that's where we're working through with uh, her very excellent curatorial team. Um, and we're working with, with a range of other stakeholders and curators and talking about these, these issues. But um, I wouldn't want to constrain it by saying, oh, no, we're only looking at the large objects and fashion and so on. It's a, it's a museum. It's a proper world-class museum that will have a range of exhibitions as it has in the past and as it will again in the future. Um, Ms. Ms. Foy, you mentioned the retention of the large objects at the Powerhouse Ultimo site. So, um, Ms. Pittman, can you tell me what is the status of the of the community desire to have the steam engine, the Maldsley, go to Goulburn? What's the latest on that? Uh, look, that that's a matter for the Powerhouse. Um, I'm I'm not directly involved in that, um, but I understand that the Powerhouse. <coughs> Um, from time to time, loans uh, components of its of its collection out to um, regional museums. But I understand it's quite a large it's quite a lar large object. So I think that you must have costings and funding in, taken into consideration. It would be, I think I read in the Sydney Morning Herald, four hundred thousand dollars to lift it out of the museum. Uh, I. I I, we don't have that detail. Very happy to take it on notice and seek advice from um, from the museum. Um, I tend not to take uh, costing advice from the Herald, but I'm, I'm <laughs> um, very very happy to get that that detail. Uh, but certainly certainly a lot of our museums um, part of part of the role of a museum is actually about providing a really fantastic audi audience experience, and they do work with um, not only regional areas but around the world around sharing their exhibitions. Um, the Australian Museum and the Dinosaur Exhibition has has travelled. Uh, we, we're really we're really actually very proud that the um, that MAS, the Powerhouse Museum has discussions with regional regional places so that they can enjoy those those objects. Um, the preservation and the care of those objects is actually at the core of what the museum's responsibilities are and the trustees' responsibilities. So we 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 are we have um, it, we are expecting and we know that they take that responsibility terribly seriously. So the movement of a large object would be a very complex process, uh, but obviously. The movement of those so that people in regional areas can enjoy them is is is, is a very good thing. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Chair. Can I just ask a question or two, if that's okay? You sure. Thank you. Okay. I am. Yes, very sure. Please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks very much, Mr. Chair, uh, and thanks so much for being here, um, Ms. Foy <laughs> and Ms. Pittman. Um, yesterday, I had the privilege of um, launching one of the regional cultural fund. Um, uh, projects which at Coffs, which was Coffs Collections. Oh, that was, which that is was, about that met the criteria. Uh, it was excellent. It met the criteria. Um, and it was obviously about the digitisation of all of the pieces in, well, a range of pieces, including all of the pieces in the museum and the gallery um, at Coffs. Um, there was so much positive discussion about that, not only that people in Coffs itself could then look at everything online, but also more broadly, the people across the country and across the world. Um, it got us to discussing the importance of digitisation, yeah. um, A, for regional communities, obviously, but B, also for um, exhibitions and collections within Sydney um, to ensure equity of access for regional people. Mm. So my question is, uh, in terms of um, digitisation, what's the government and, and what's Create New South Wales actually doing to have a real focus on this and really increase it? Thank you for that. Uh, yes, the Coffs, the Coffs Harbour um, website that went live just recently is, is a really fantastic 
um, opportunity to look at the <clears throat> to see the breadth of the collection that they have and, and especially in this time where um, you know unfortunately the access to physically go and and see these items uh, is limited due to COVID it's a really wonderful opportunity to have to still be able to engage with those objects uh, the regional cultural fund has been coordinating a digitization program for um, for uh, regional galleries and museums uh, we've worked very closely with museums and galleries New South Wales in the development of that and with the individual uh, end-user galleries as well we um, we have uh, um, allocated five million dollars for for this exercise and 11 um, local collections um, have been uh, provided with funding for that. In addition, we're um, in the process of developing a um, what you would call a hub and spoke model um, for uh, enabling regional uh, galleries to leverage a, um, a, a hub which has the equipment that they need in order to um, develop the uh, in order to digitize their items and um, and training around that digitization uh, process as well as a platform an online platform for them to use to um, to actually showcase their items so you're sorry just to be clear so you're actually providing that to the regional galleries we will be yes great what's the time frame for that uh, I would have to take that on notice to give you a specific answer. That's great. And will then they, um, is that for regional museums as well as regional galleries? Yes. Okay. And then will they um, communicate with the, um, the more local galleries or the community museums and so on and, and work with them potentially? Is that what you mean by hub and spoke? Yes, I, I, so there'll be individual museum um, nodes, essentially hubs, yep. that, that will um, take on some responsibility, have, have the equipment there, do some training, and then the, the smaller galleries um, and, and, um, and uh, museums can leverage that expertise. So we're just in the process of, of um, rolling out that program. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Ms. Pittman, the, um, what is the status of the Riverside Theatre redevelopment that's connected to the Parramatta um, powerhouse? Mm -hmm. What's the status of, the, of that? So we have worked uh, with um, the city of Parramatta to develop a business case uh, for the future of the Riverside Theatres. Um, that business case was provided, a draft of that business case was provided to uh, the Parramatta um, Council last year, the end of um, 2019. We've been working collaboratively since then with them to, to put the fi finishing touches on that business case, um, and that work is, is ongoing. Can you tell me, um, do you have a date for construction to begin on the Parramatta Powerhouse? For it to begin on Par Parramatta Power Powerhouse, yep. uh, I would have to take that on notice. But, but you don't have it in It'll your be next year. Do you have? Can you be a bit more specific than early next year? Do you have? I hate it, to be a, a bureaucrat, but um, I would like to turn to process. So the process is that we're in the planning phase. Yep. Um, submissions have been received, and Infrastructure New South Wales is in the process of responding to the issues raised in the submission. They're mm -hmm. taking the lead on delivery. Um, the time frame for those, I think, again, we talked about last time. So I'm, I uh, refer back to the evidence submitted by Mr. Draper. Um, we're expected once we're through that planning process, we have the INSW, the Infrastructure New South Wales assurance process that we go through. So, um, the pre tender construction, pre construction tenders are, are submitted to a gateway review process. Um, following that, and the successful completion of that particular gateway, we go to market. Um, the market will then come back with their responses that are assessed, and through that, there'll be uh, confirmation on when a start date would be, but we're holding holding to our uh, timeline of being in market uh, late, uh, through the gate into Thank gateway you. this year and into market, um, you know, over the, the the subsequent months for construction next year. Okay, so but you so must. So I can't give you a precise date. That is really there's quite a bit of process to work through. Oh yeah, there are four quarters in the year: the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. I'll come back to you. I can't do it off the top of my head, but again. Uh, we're looking to go to market 
uh, the end of this year. end of this year, early next year. Okay, when you say subject to gateway, when you say to market, what does that mean? That when means you, going, uh, putting a tender to the construction market. Also, tender to the construction to construction companies at the end of the year. I beg your pardon. So you're looking at a tender to construction companies end of the year. Uh, look, this is a question for INSW, and I'll need to confirm with them. But my understanding is a timeline of through the planning process, a gateway assurance uh, tendered to market, all led by Infrastructure New South Wales. So, could you take it on notice? Then, could you tell me on notice when when you plan to do what what the current plan is for tender process and current plan for construction at this stage yes, because yes. You, you, you're very clear on a planning process yep. so you must have benchmarks and you must have dates set down which I understand will shift yes yes so um, I'm very happy to take that on notice and seek advice from infrastructure New South Wales thank you okay on that happy note mr. chair any more questions? No. No, no, no I'll, I'll, I'll hold mine. <laughs> I'll hold yours. I'll OK. Mine. Thank you very much. I note you've taken some questions on notice. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Secretary will be in contact with you um, as soon as we finish here, I would think. Thank and you. Thank you. you. I think it's 14 days for a response. 21 days. Oh, so we're 20, being very no, no, generous. No, make it 14. 20, 14 21 days. 14 is good. Thanks very much.